everyone. I am Becca and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time with us, welcome. And if you have read a first chapter with us before, welcome back. I am so excited to have each and every one of you here today because we are going to be reading the first chapter of Those Kids from Fawn Creek, which is written by Erin and Trotta Kelly. Erin and Trotta Kelly is such an incredible author. She has written other phenomenal novels such as Hello Universe, um, as well as We Dream of Space, which was another one of my favorites. If you haven't checked that one out, check that one out too. Um, this book was phenomenal. I loved it. And I know you're going to love it too. So let's uh, dive on in by reading the synopsis on the inside front cover. Every day in Fawn Creek, Louisiana is exactly the same. And every kid at Fawn Creek K through 12 is the same as last year and the year before that. Well, except for Rennie Dean, she moved to Grand St. Lodge, the next town over. Good riddance as far as best friends since forever Dorothy Doucette and Grayson Broussard are concerned. Rennie Dean was never all that nice to them. Every day in Fawn Creek, Louisiana is exactly the same. And every kid in seventh grade is part of the same group, group that they've been in since forever. The self-proclaimed God Squad. Dalen, Bailey, and Hallie. Fawn Creek royalty, Janie, Abby, Barn, and Slowly. The Jocks, Max, Colt, Daniel. Then there's Dorothy and Grayson. Every day in Fawn Creek, Louisiana is exactly the same until it isn't. All right, so um, another little excerpt on the back I'm also going to share just because it has a little bit more information. Usually the 12 seventh graders were careful to leave their faces blank and expressionless. No one wanted to be the first to admit they were excited about anything. But this, a real life new student, a real life new anything, was far more interesting than any science experiment. People from somewhere else just didn't come to Fawn Creek. All right, so. Yeah, this novel is about a new student who comes to Fawn Creek uh, to a very small class size. Uh, imagine only having 12 students in your class, in your grade. Um, all right, let's dive in. Let's just let's just get started. So the first section of the book is week one. And let's go ahead and start chapter one. On the day Orchid Mason walked through the door of Fawn Creek K-12, through Grayson Broussard's right shoulder ached. A bruise would form there, he could tell. Stupid Trevor. Trevor had said he was just kidding around when he pinched and twisted Grayson's skin. But what kind of kidding is it when one person is laughing and the other wants to crawl into a hole and die? And he'd done it on the way to school, in the truck, with their dad right there, not saying or doing anything as usual all because Grayson said he didn't want to go duck hunting. People will start to think you're soft the way you go around, his father had said, his meaty hand propped on the steering wheel as the truck pulled into the drop-off line. Last I checked, I have two sons, not a son and a daughter. And that's when Trevor howled with laughter, even though it was an old joke, one their father had told many times before. He's already soft, Trevor said, and that's when he'd pinched him. Weren't older brothers supposed to be role models or something? When the truck pulled into the circle, Grayson got out and lingered behind, like usual, watching his stupid brother take the front steps two at a time. It was Friday, November 1st, and Grayson was going to school, just like he'd done every week since the beginning of time, to see the same 11 classmates he had known since the dawn of man, because in Fawn Creek, the air was hot and humid, the mosquitoes nipped your arms and nothing ever changed. At that moment, Grayson decided to let his mind float away from school to the nearby creek. He imagined he was standing toe to water with a fishing rod in his hand. The creek is quiet and there's no one around but me, the water and the fish. No father, no brother, no school, just me. He would have floated through the entirety of the morning if Dorothy hadn't kicked his chair and jolted him, jolted him back to reality at the beginning of first period English. She did it lightly. Dorothy did everything lightly, but it was enough. That's when he looked up. 
The pain faded as soon as he saw her. Not really, of course, but it seemed like it. The pinch disappeared, the hurt evaporated. Mr. Agosto tapped his desk with his knuckles, even though everyone was already looking at him, or more accurately, looking at the girl standing by his side. Attention all, Mr. Augusto said, his eyes shining. We have a new student. It was obvious that Mr. Augusto was trying not to show his excitement. He made the same face when he introduced projects that he thought his students would be into, like writing imaginary letters to dead poets that none of them cared about. Dear Emily Dickinson, is it true that you wore a white dress and never left your house, or is that made up? Grayson's letter had said. Even though Grayson didn't care much about Emily Dickinson's poetry, he'd been fascinated by the poet herself. She seemed so mysterious. And now he was fascinated by a new mystery. This girl standing at the head of class in a white t-shirt and a breezy pleated skirt. Grayson's mother was a seamstress. She fixed hems, made decorative pillows, took in pageant and prom dresses. And he knew a pleated skirt when he saw one. The girl's hair was long, very long, past her waist and wavy. No, not wavy, curly, big, disheveled, but somehow looking like it was supposed to be that way. There was a white flower tucked behind her ear, even though it was November and no one was thinking about flowers. And who tucked flowers behind their ear anyway? Usually the 12 seventh graders were careful to leave their faces blank and expressionless. No one wanted to be the first to admit that they were excited about anything. But this, a real life new student, a real life new anything, was far more interesting than any science experiment. People from somewhere else just didn't come to Fawn Creek, certainly not unannounced. The next closest thing was Mr. Agosto, who was born in Venezuela and was the only non-white face in almost every room. But he had moved to Fawn Creek when he was three years old because his dad got a job at Gimmerton. And like Grayson, Dorothy, and virtually everyone else, he had never traveled outside of South Louisiana since then. The farthest he'd gone was to Baton Rouge to go to Louisiana State that was just two hours away. Small towns are like magnets, Grayson's mother once said. They pull you in and don't let go. And now the magnet had lured in a stranger. Janie and Abby Crawford sat up straight and fixed their blue eyes on her. Grayson wondered what they were thinking. Max Bord Bordelon, Daniel Landry, and Michael Colt, all of whom played youth football together in the next town, exchanged looks and smirks. Barnett and Lehigh Kingery slouched at their desks. The others shifted in their seats. Grayson watched as the girl waved hello, like a royal greeting her subjects. The bangles on her wrist jangled. She smiled, a big, natural, easy smile that showed all of her perfectly straight teeth. Dalen Goudry and Bailey Tran, who sat in the row next to him, pursed their lips. They'd both recently gotten braces. Hallie Romero, the third girl in their trio, had spent days trying to convince them they looked great. Mr. Augusto continued. Her name is... I'm Orchid Mason, the girl said. She pointed to the only empty desk in the classroom. It was right next to Janie and Abby Crawford. I'll just sit here if that's okay. She breezed to her new desk and sat down in one fluid movement. She smelled like citrus. And just like that, there were 13 of them. Okay, that is the first chapter of those kids from Fawn Creek. Orkin Mason is a wonderfully mysterious character and I think you'll really enjoy unla unraveling her mystery um, alongside with Grayson and Dorothy who are also phenomenal characters. So uh, if you plan on reading this book or you have read it, please share something about it with us in the comments below. Um, and yeah, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I can't wait to see you guys again soon.